Hey guys, this is Nick Gross here. Um, in our last lesson, we talked about um, major chords and minor chords as they pertain to a key. Um, we talked about the G major scale. You know, the chords that pertain to each note in the major scale and why. Um, in the relationship between thirds, which just to recap, if it's two whole steps, then it's a major third. If it's one and a half, a whole step and a half step, then it's a minor third. And in every chord other than a diminished chord, we have a major uh, from the third to the fifth note, that's a major th third. Um, so, that's the reason that our seventh note pertains to a diminished chord because it has a minor uh, third from the third note to the fifth note, um, or from the third to the fifth in that chord. Um, so our next lesson is going to be me teaching you guys to play three songs, then kind of working you guys up to the point where we can learn something really fun and you'll learn from it as well. Um, this lesson is gonna be really simple. It's just something for you guys to try out to help you uh, sound better when you're playing. So when you're playing the guitar, I'm gonna show you guys um, techniques other than just picking and fretting. And I'm gonna uh, walk you guys through different types of guitar picks. This is a Dunlop Jazz 3. It's very thick. Um, if a guitar pick is thin, it would be called light. And if it was thick, it would be heavy, or in this case, uh, more towards extra heavy. So um, if you listen, that sounds, sounds good, right? That's with the extra heavy pick. But now if I take my thumb and I there's a difference. There's a bit of a difference. Sorry that I'm hearing a bit of noise from the street right now. Uh, as always, I'm in the print shop I work at, Old San Juan Print Shop, um, and that's San Juan, Puerto Rico. But if you, okay, so. There's a difference, right? When I use the pick, it's different than with my thumb. It sounds a little brighter. Now here's the thinnest pick I could find. It's a Dunlop Tortex um, type pick. It's got a little turtle on it in the, in the shell. It says Tortex if you're interested in getting the same ones. Here's the extra heavy. So there's a difference, right? This one kind of just brushes along the strings really lightly. So then I'm gonna go for a Fender medium pick. Um, these Fenders are really good. This is, I've had this pick forever. If you see the point is just worn off of it. I had a guitar and Ibanez E Gen 8, and the pickups were just covered in green and blue dust because I only used the green and the blue ones and some silver ones. But, um, so that the light, the very thin one, right, um, it sounded really like, I'll just, I'll just do a, uh, now here's the medium. And that's really similar. Um, I would say you have a bit, a little more control with the medium. Um, I truthfully prefer the medium, and that that was um, a Dun, a Jim Dunlop Tortex medium. So we'll do the Fender medium now.
pretty much the same. I think I like this one, the Jim Dunlop a little. Just because it has a little bit more of a point, um, just the shape is slightly different, and I think I do better with it, but it's all a matter of preference. So now here's a heavy gauge um, Jim, Dun Jim Dunlop. It's a Tortex, but this one's an XL Jazz series. So um, this is probably between heavy and extra heavy. Um, perfect for me I like that but um what I want you guys to do go to your local music shop or online but preferably to your music shop so you can do it quicker and you're gonna get a light uh, light pick a medium pick a heavy pick and an extra heavy pick and maybe a few that are different shapes like the ones I use are these tiny little things in comparison to a normal one See, it's a, uh, and I prefer that because then I can just have a tiny little point sticking out. You know, it makes it easier for me to do certain things. Um, I just feel like the pick is never in the way of anything I'm doing. <laughs> When you play with a pick, it's going to change the sound of the guitar a little bit. I would say a lot like this light pick or a medium pick are best for stuff like It just has that really bright, uh, beautiful noise, but it's kind of harder to control. If you could hear during the, um, when I played single notes, it's kind of like the tip is like, psh, 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 like kind of snapping because it's so thin. So I'm gonna pull out this Fender medium and do kind of the same thing. If you listen, um, this one sounds a lot different than that one, and that's only one difference in gauge. So, um, another thing to take into consideration, I went over this right at the beginning, but when you use your fingers without, when you use no pick, it gives it a really different, unique sound. And I'm gonna show you guys a few things with that. So. Sounds really full to me, but also not loud. Um, I think with the fingers, with with my thumb, after practicing a bit, um, it's a lot easier for me to make the notes all ring together at the exact same volume. And um, it's ideal for certain scenarios, especially in an electric guitar. If you have a pick in your hand for the solo, right, then you can just kind of... Like I'm using just my middle finger. You know, um, and so if there's just a little section that needs to be light, then you can come in. achieve different tones there. So another thing you can do, when you strum, it gives it that different sound. So that's just, um, 
something that kind of helps, um, what you can do is use your fingertips. And by that, I mean, if I'm doing a G chord or a C chord, I'm gonna have my thumb on the lowest note, and then a, f a finger um, excluding my pinky. You can throw the pinky in, but I don't. So if I were to play chords just lightly plucking with every finger, then it gives it a really unique sound. That's something that um, is used a lot in jazz. It'd be like, You know, um, but you can use it in any chord. And it gives it that really just light, beautiful sound. Um, on an electric guitar, if you were to play something, you could be like... And it would kind of sound, if you really dialed it into that jazz tone, um, I call that um, piano chords on the guitar because when you hear them, you're like, is that guitar? Isn't it guitar? When I first started learning jazz, um, when I, you know, most people my age think jazz is completely lame, but I learned, uh, I played in a jazz band in college, and it's actually really cool. When you play them just right with your fingertips, and on an electric guitar and you dial the tone in just right, um, it'll sound kind of like a piano. So I call it piano chords on the guitar. And that's just something really, really cool. Um, like something different you can do just with your hands. You know, you don't need to buy anything. You just need to put a little time in and you're jamming. Okay, so. Um, your hands have a lot of different uses too when you're playing. For instance, you can play the bass with your thumb while you play the chords with your fingers. Now I'm not gonna uh, get too hardcore into that, but just listen to the bass. Okay, it's gonna sound like a bass guitar because I'm using my thumb instead of a pick. The pick kind of gives it more of a guitar sound or an electric guitar, six string guitar sound. So this will sound like a bass guitar. So hear that, you know. When you um, pick it with your thumb and you're trying to get that bass noise, you're gonna pick it firmly, but make sure you don't snap the string like that. Hear that? You wanna just... I almost push it downwards, like, um, like downwards, if this were downwards, kind of just right downward, just like you're picking, you know, downward, upward, downward, upward, down. So you're just gonna do it just like you have a pick in your fingers, but your thumb is the pick. And I use the little um, thumb meat right here, um, just on the side there. You'll build up a tiny callus and then you can, um, I also plant my finger against it to give it support and then you can, And you can also throw in other fingers, you know, you can... Uh, hopefully, you, I think you can see my hand because I'm looking at the video, but if you can't, um, you know, I just... One uh, hand or one finger per string and then throw the pinky in for the highest, pit, you know, for the B and the E. Um, but that's just ways to get different sounds on the guitar, you know, the, the, your goal for playing the guitar should be, you hear the guitar and it sounds good, and you go, I want to make the guitar sound like that. And so I'm just kind of giving you the tools to do so yourself. Um, 
something interesting that one can do with the guitar. Um, if you've ever heard of Fleetwood Mac, um, what is her name? Uh, Stevie Nicks uses, uh, these are banjo picks, I play the banjo as well, but um, these will give you a unique sound. See, these are copper and then this is like extra, extra heavy pick. So you can... So I'm just gonna try to do like a little finger picking thing here. I'm, I don't normally use these on the guitar. I usually just use my fingertips when I finger pick, but... <laughs> uh, that doesn't sound very good, but the entire point is that it sounds different than You know, there's just huge differences in um, different techniques of playing the guitar and um, there's a lot of unique ways we can get different sounds out of the guitar. Let's say um, we printed this for a local business and this one um, wasn't up to specifications. So I fold it up, fold it again, uh, diagonally, and then I can use and I can use it as a pick, and it's gonna have a very unique sound because no one plays with a paper pick, right? You can find, take any random object from around your house. Hear that? It has, it's super, super light and it's wearing through there. But that's just a random object that I picked up and used like a pick. Um, pen cap. You know, just a random pen cap I have lying around. I can. You know, it sounds different than um, it sounds different than a pick would. No, it's not practical, but most of guitar playing isn't very practical. I can take this pencil and use the rubber on the eraser and just. You know, um, like, uh, there's just all sorts of really cool things you can do with random stuff, random objects or whatever. You know, there's just a lot of different ways to get tones. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is um, maybe research some of your favorite musicians or um, other things like that. Go to your guitar shop, get uh, some picks, just uh, an assortment of guitar picks, um, and 
um, look up your favorite guitarists, anything that they might happen to use in their playing, pick up one of those if it's like, a, you know what I mean, like a glass slide or a metal slide, something like this. Uh, a capo, if you think you're going to need it, you probably won't need it for a while, but uh, maybe get one. Uh, here's the last thing I'm going to show you guys. So, um, this is, there's something called a resonator guitar, aka a dobro. Um, dobro is a company uh, in the Gibson family that made resonator guitars when they were first created. So everyone calls resonator guitars dobros. So a dobro is played like this. It's like a guitar, but the strings are raised up a bit higher and you can Um, so that's just a big hunk of metal you could take like I see a lot of people do it with flasks mostly alcoholics but um, people will take flasks and they'll do that and they'll slide around the guitar like that you can change the tuning to um, match it if you're into that sort of thing you know you can change the tuning so um, you can tune it like a dobro or a resonator would be So, um, that's pretty much that part of the lesson. Now, I know this video is going long, so long that I'm retuning my guitar, but I have a few quick techniques to show you guys as well. Okay, so... Uh, a lot of you are probably familiar because you probably went off vigilante style and learned some stuff on your own by now since I've been boring the shit out of you and I'm probably not the first person that, whose lessons that you looked at, but there's a hammer on and that's simply plucking a note and then you put a finger down while the string's still vibrating. Like that and then um, that's useful in guitar solos you know and then there's a pull-off now a pull-off is just a uh, hammer-on but backwards so that's a hammer-on now I keep both fingers down here I have both fingers down and when I take my finger off of the string I pull downward a little bit and that it's like my fingers plucking the string as it comes off. But make sure um, you're not making any noise by touching the string underneath. So what, what I do is just very lightly um, while I have both fingers down, pluck it bring it down as I pull this, as I pull off. So I'm, I'm bending the string down just the tiniest bit. So then when I pull my finger off, it's gonna um, make the next note louder. It's like helping to pluck the string. So hammer on and pull off, we can put that together. Now, 
for these techniques, just practice them to the point where you can, where you figure out how to do it. That they're pretty simple, but um, I don't want you guys, you know, spending 15 minutes going. You know, that's just kind of counterproductive. So just um, work with each of these probably a minute at a time and then switch to the next one uh, until you can without, you know, you want to just reduce any extra noise or any unpleasant noise. So the next one I'm going to teach you guys is the slide. I got hammer on pull off, so we're going to learn slides. Now a slide is, um, with hammer-ons and pull-offs, we could just pick it, you know. You know, it would be the same thing if we picked both notes. It's just making your right hand have to do less work by making your left hand have to do more work. But the slide, you have to slide to get this sound that this, you know, if you're, if there's a solo and it says slide, You have to slide. There's no getting around it. You can't. You know, it, it won't. There's no getting around the slide. So a slide is simply. You know, you're just sliding forward and then sliding back. Switch the fingers that you're doing uh, these techniques with because you're not always going to be using your pointer finger or your ring finger or your pinky. You know, use all of them for every technique. Um, so slide is pretty self-explanatory, but what you're going to do is you're going to pluck it and then move your finger. And you don't have to hold, if you hold on too tight, uh, well, I can't do it too tight, but um, a lot of the time if you do it too tight or too lightly, you know, holding down the fret, it's gonna either, you'll get a bunch of extra noise if you do it too light or too heavy, or you won't hear the note. So that's, um, that's three. I feel like I'm missing one. But we're just going to get straight into bends. Bends are the most complicated one. Um, now, if we're here and we're trying to bend to that, we're going to pluck it and then bend the string. Hear that? That's the note we're trying to bend to. So we get that note in our ear and then we go here and bend it. You know, and that's gonna tear your fingers right up. That and the slide tear your fingers wide open. But uh, you're gonna need to practice it, you know, and um, that that's known as a half step bend. Now there's whole step bends as well, but we're playing a friggin' acoustic guitar here. So um, if it's written a whole step bend, let's say, from here to here, we can't we can't get that high. We can't bend it that far. We're gonna snap a string. So what we can do instead is instead of bending the third fret, we can bend the fourth fret. And it, it's it gives the same exact effect because as long as it's not an insanely slow bend, who can hear the difference? All you really need is for it to end on that, on that note right there. So um, when we're bending, that when we bend up, it's the bend, and then here's a release would be uh, bringing it back down to the original pitch. Now when you do a bend, you don't have to release, and when you 
Um, sometimes you'll have where you bend it up and then you pick it. With, so it's only the release. There's no bend in it. You are bending it, but the bend is silent. So it's only a release. Um, there's also a few other situations that we could get into. Um, sometimes you're gonna have a bend and then you're gonna have a release after some notes. But what you're gonna have to do is keep the string bent or you can bend it up, mute it, and then bend it up again and pick it and release. So it simulates the, uh, 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 well, that's not important. You would get it. We did hammer-ons, bends, uh, pull-offs, slides. Huh. Um. There was an, another technique I wanted to teach you guys other than harmonics, but I'm gonna just go straight into harmonics. If you take your finger, just lightly, see, hear it? It's still ringing out. Uh, see that 12th fret bar? Um, since it's halfway down the guitar, um, it's halfway between, right there. That's a natural harmonic. Now, um, a lot of songs are gonna use these, but they're mostly newer songs, like kind of hipster-ish. Um, but there's there's a lot of songs that use them, like Yes by Roundabout starts. And then, however the hell. Um, okay, so. You have your natural harmonics here, and then you have natural harmonics at the seventh fret. But they're different ones. Okay, and you can get the same ones down here. Sorry, I was doing it at the 17th, it's at the 19th fret. So at the 19th fret, you can get the same ones, but up here, it's the, it's the same ones as up here, but they're gonna ring out better up here. Okay, now there's other types of harmonics as well, but we're not gonna get into those. Hear that. Um, what that one is, is simply put, you're picking, but then you let um, the side of your finger just barely, 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 it has to not even graze it, it has to just, it has to just touch it, but like, so minimally, and it'll produce that. Um, and what that is, is the string starts vibrating and then your finger disrupts it by touching it lightly. And so only a portion of the note rings out. It's still the same note as it would be on the fret. But it's different. Um, there's a lot of different types of harmonics. Um, some really weird ones. There was one that I was doing. Um, if you like, I, I had a sweater on, 
and I had just the tiniest bit of the sleeve touching the bottom of the string, I could do like, um, like, but it would sound like, um, it would sound like it was being played on a sitar. There's a lot of different uh, harmonics you can get, but we're not gonna talk about that right now. That's a bit complicated. And um, they're pretty hard to do, uh, especially when you're still not super comfortable on the guitar. Okay, so um, the last technique that I was forgetting about is you have percussion. Okay, so if I'm... You know, like... Or it's better with my fingertips. You know, you have um, all sorts of zones that you can... If I mute a string up here, then it gives a percussive noise. So if I'm... Um, kind of better on an electric guitar, but there's just a huge amount of percussive noises you can throw in. That's pretty much... Once you've mastered everything else, start throwing percussion in, because it's hard. It's a challenge, for sure. Um, I mean, I see a lot of people doing simple percussion, and that's definitely where to start, you know. If, um, but, I digress. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's the lesson. Um, so we're gonna practice, we're gonna get different kinds of picks, Practice, um, try using your fingertips in different ways. And we're gonna get different types of picks, see which one you think sounds best and whichever one is easiest to play with. For me, um, I think that the light one sounds the best, but the orange one, is easier to play with uh, for chords but neither I can't it's hard for me to use either of them for solos the heavy this heavy one for me is just so insanely insanely accurate that I wouldn't sacrifice that accuracy for tone because I can just use my own um, use my mind, my ears, my hands to give it a lighter sound, you know. But if I were to strum like I would with the light pick, it would be. are kind of tricky to play with too. Um, it might sound really good when I'm playing with it, but I think if you got the same pick, you would probably be, you know, like stuff like that. Um, it's really important that when you're trying out picks, you're just lightly gliding them across the strings. Like that. Um, you don't want, you want just the tip, the tip to be, um, like that. You don't want to be, you know, really like, I'm having trouble even doing it because this pick is so small, but I've seen people where they'll have half of the pick, you know, they'll have it like this. 
And it works to make it loud, but I mean, your pick's going to fly out of your hand. You have no control. Um, so you're going to go home, get picks, um, get a few different types of picks, at least one light, one medium, and one heavy, and probably one extra heavy. Um, I would suggest the Fender picks or Jim Dunlop picks. Um, the Fender picks, though, I think look cooler, whereas the Jim Dunlop picks, um, I prefer the shape. They're a little bit pointier, but you can use a file or something and file it, file down a pick a little bit when it's when one of these when it starts losing its point, as you can see. The edge is a little ground down there because I just, you know, against some sandpaper, just the tip, and then um, wiped it down with a washcloth to get all the dust off and everything. Um, so you're gonna practice hammer ons, pull offs, slides. Hammer-on, pull-off, slides, bends. Bends are gonna tear your fingers right up. The thicker the string that you're bending, the more it'll tear your fingers up. So I would start, start near the 12th fret on the high E because it's easiest to bend there. If you're, the, the closer you are to the nut here, the harder it's gonna be to bend. It's harder to bend there and then. You know, um, it's harder to bend up here than it would be here. So practice your bends here and then just try to work your way closer and you're gonna. You're gonna be um, really listening, checking the note that you're bending to, and then bending. Hear that? It, when I pick it while it's bent, sounds exactly the same as picking the next fret without bending it, obviously. Um, so, one last technique. I know I showed you guys a lot, but um, when you're, let's say I'm on, the, I'm playing a G, okay? If I go up to the D string and go two notes over, so from, so it's three on the E and then five on the D string, that's skipping over the A string. So see those strings I'm plucking together? Now that's an octave, those are the same notes. Now if I take this shape and go up a string, it works. But if I take the same shape and go up another string, it doesn't work. It's not the same. So you're gonna have to go, if I'm on three, then six will be the octave from for the higher pitch strings. For the two higher pitch strings, so you have Three five three five three six three six, and that you can play octaves anywhere, and they're really useful. You know, you can. Uh... sound really good. Uh, you can play an octave in place of any single note and you don't have to play the octave together. You can do a little straight cat style there. Um, but that's the entire lesson guys. Sorry for rambling on. This is my longest video by far. But next lesson I'm going to teach you guys how to play three songs and they're going to be really fun. Um, and I already have decided on two of them. Um, I'm trying to decide between teaching you guys Knocking on Heaven's Door, which would be the Guns N' Roses version, 
or um, Ste Steelers Wheel. Um, I don't know why I came here tonight. I got the feeling that something ain't right. I'm so scared in case I fall off my chair. Oh yeah, stuck in the middle with you. So, um, I'm assuming by the time I make the video, no one will have seen this video, but I would love you guys' suggestions. I think I'm gonna do Stuck in the Middle with you because it's uh, simpler. You know, I, it's just a... Uh, tiny bit of variation uh, we'll see thank you guys so much for watching again uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy my shit uh,